Hi, I'm Professor Silver, and today I'll be breaking down the history of Cynthia's Garchomp, detailing how each and every one of her anime battles solidified her position as the anime's strongest dragon type. This video is brought to you by Rakuten. Rakuten is the largest cashback site. They partner with over 3,500 of the biggest name brands, with some of them including Walmart, GameStop, and Best Buy. You can get cash back for both everyday purchases and self-indulgent sprees for the latest Pokemon game and card set. After you sign up for Rakuten using the link in the description, you can use it as a browser extension, or if you're on the site, you can check yourself which store has the best deals. As you can see from GameStop right here, they're offering 10% back on new games. If you were to buy Pokemon Scarlet at that percentage, you'd get $5.99 credited back to your Rakuten account. For games that you're gonna buy anyway, Rakuten is a great way to save some extra money. It's possible that you'll get back hundreds or even thousands of dollars by next year's end. If you sign up now using the link in the description, you'll get a $30 cashback bonus on your first qualifying purchase of $30 or more. With your $30 sign-up bonus, this would bring Pokemon Scarlet to $29.99 after Rakuten mails your cash back. If you already own that particular game, other deals you could take advantage of include Sonic Frontier at $9.99 after you get your cash back bonus, and this trading card set at only $14.99. Rakuten doesn't just work on games. You can apply it to many of your other holiday purchases. It's free to use and a great way to save money, so make sure to sign up using my link in the description. The $30 sign up bonus makes it a can't miss deal. And now on to Garchomp. Much of Garchomp's power stems from her bond with Cynthia. It was revealed in Journeys that the two of them met while the Pokémon was only an egg. Like Ash with Riolu, Cynthia cared deeply for the egg and couldn't have been more excited when it hatched. Gibble was not only her starter, but also her most loyal friend. Together, they went on life-changing adventures, won the Sinnoh League, and became regional champions. During Diamond and Pearl, Garchomp proved herself as a major bruiser by throttling every challenger that threatened Cynthia's title. In her debut in Top Down Training, for example, she easily beat Lucian's Bronzong. That same episode, Garchomp also defended Cynthia's honor by devastating Paul. She defeated four of his Pokémon, one after another. Opposite Chimchar, she tanked Fire Spin and won with Dig. Versus Weavile, Garchomp blocked Blizzard, dodged Ice Beam, and triumphed with Dragon Rush. Her next opponent, Murkrow, tried to win with Haze and Sky Attack, but she subsequently defeated it with Giga Impact. It wasn't until Paul capitalized on Garchomp's recharge period that he finally presented a true challenge. Though his Torterra landed Giga Drain and launched Frenzy Plant, Garchomp shrugged off the assault and won with Brick Break. Her power was so undeniable that Paul gave up rather than use any of his other Pokémon. Garchomp's next two battles were far less intense. Rather than fight League-level threats, she clobbered the forces of Team Galactic. Beating Saturn's Bronzor and losing its Lustrous and Galactic Golbat in Double Team Turnover served as great training for her eventual showdown with Eren's Drapion. The battle with the Elite Four Ace took place in aiding the enemy, but unfortunately it wasn't shown in full. From there, Garchomp fought Frontier Brain Palmer's Milotic in Arceus and the Jewel of Life. Fueled by movie-level animation, she landed Dragon Claw, blocked Hydro Pump, and let loose Flamethrower. The battle's victor wasn't shown, but the fight itself served as a stark reminder of Garchomp's incredible power. Having proven herself against Palmer, Garchomp then battled Team Galactic in the battle finale of Legend. During the epic turn of events, she beat Jupiter Skuntank, buried Piplup, and hit Legends. At the end of Diamond and Pearl, Garchomp squared off against Flints and Infernape in Memories Are Made of Bliss. Infernape landed many blows, but ultimately lost after being hit by Dragon Rush. The battle is especially notable, as it foreshadowed Ash's eventual showdown with Cynthia at the Masters 8. In black and white, Garchomp traveled with Cynthia to Unova. During the episode All for the Love of Meloetta, they battled Iris and her Axew. At the battle's start, Garchomp shrugged off Scratch, withstood Dragon Rage, landed Dragon Rush, and followed up with Draco Meteor. Although Axew survived the assault and countered with Giga Impact, Garchomp responded with Brick Break. She could have won the battle then and there, but Cynthia called it off as she thought that Iris and Axew had already proven themselves as future rivals. While still in Unova and jostling for the Junior Cup, Garchomp fought Elite Four member Caitlyn's Gothitelle. The exhibition battle took place just prior to the start of the World Tournament Junior Cup. To open the battle, Gothitelle sowed confusion with Flatter and attacked with Psychic. In response, Garchomp broke free, landed Dragon Rush, and let loose Draco Meteor. Gothitelle blocked the blast with Thunderbolt and powered up Brick Break, but Garchomp met her hit for hit. 
Unfortunately, neither Pokémon walked away with a win as the timer elapsed before the battle concluded. In Garchomp's final Unova adventure, she fought the forces of nature in Unova's survival crisis. The fight with the legendaries was significant, as it was the first time that she showed she might be beatable by others. Garchomp missed out on Kalos and Alola, but made many comebacks in Pokémon Journeys. After it was revealed in Star Knight, Star Flight that Cynthia had joined the Masters 8, Garchomp again proved her might. Opposite an unknown clone, she swapped many hits, set up Sandstorm, and won out with Scale Shot. Because the Masters tournament was still a ways away, Garchomp then shifted focus towards helping Cynthia in all her other endeavors. She battled Meowth in the Gates of Warp, but couldn't use Outrage or Seize Victory due to the influence of extra-dimensional forces. Despite the setback, however, Garchomp returned at full force in the Legends Arceus special. During the multi-parter, she fought both Team Galactic and Heatran. When it came time for the first round of the Masters 8, Garchomp was fully ready to battle Iris' Haxorus in the first round. Unlike when he was in Axew, Haxorus offered Garchomp a legitimate challenge. To start things off, he cut through Draco Meteor and landed Outrage. His power was so impressive that Cynthia revealed her Keystone and Mega evolved Garchomp into her ultimate form. Once a Mega, Garchomp then launched Dragon Claw. Although Haxorus blocked it with Psycho Cut, led a great counter, and then used Dragon Pulse, Mega Garchomp still won the battle as she pummeled him into oblivion with Draco Meteor. Because of the victory, Cynthia advanced to the semifinals. During the first matchup opposite Ash, Garchomp first fought Dracovish. Before returning to her ball, she dodged Ice Fang, landed Dragon Claw, and set up Stealth Rock. Upon returning to the field opposite Surfetched, Garchomp opened with Scale Shot. Surprisingly, Surfetch tore through the attack, used Fury Cutter, activated Detect, and let off Meteor Assault. In spite of the fighting type's best efforts, however, it still lost to Garchomp as Dragonclaw was simply too formidable an attack. Regrettably, Garchomp didn't Mega Evolve during the battle as Cynthia instead Dynamaxed Togekiss. Only one gimmick could be used per battle, so Garchomp had to battle Mega Lucario in her base form. Even though she didn't have access to her full power, she started strong with Scale Shot. Mega Lucario stopped the attack and let off Bullet Punch, but she matched him strike for strike with Dragon Claw. Like Bulbasaur and Meganium did at the Johto League, the two of them then traded many heavy-handed blows. Once each of them reached their breaking point, they respectively gathered all their power and let off one final attack. Sadly for both Cynthia and Garchomp, Lucario proved victorious as reversal overpowered Dragon Claw. As can be expected, Cynthia couldn't have been prouder of Garchomp's performance. Thanks to the battle's intensity, she decided to give up on her dreams of retirement and continue on her quest to be the world's best trainer. It's possible that she and Garchomp will appear in more battles as time goes on, but while we wait for that to happen, let's get to Garchomp's battle record. Garchomp won against Lucian's Bronzong, Paul's Chimchar, Paul's Weavile, Paul's Murkrow, Paul's Torterra, Saturn's Bronzor, Jupiter's Skuntank, Flint's Infernape, Unknown, Iris's Haxorus, Rhyperior, and Ash's Surfetched. Her one and only loss was to Mega Lucario. It can also be argued that she tied with Caitlyn's Gothitel. Move-wise, Garchomp used Brick Break, Dig, Draco Meteor, Dragon Claw, Dragon Rush, Flamethrower, Giga Impact, Outrage, Sandstorm, Scale Shot, Stealth Rock, and Stonehenge. It should go without saying that Garchomp is the strongest dragon in all the Pokemon anime. She has a great design, stellar moveset, and near-perfect battle record. I would have loved to see her go Mega against Ash, but I'm relieved that I have an excuse on why she lost. Had she tapped into her full potential, I know Lucario would have gone the way of Haxorus and Surfetched. In my humble opinion, the only Pokemon who can challenge Garchomp at max power are Ash's Greninja and Leon's G-Max Charizard. On that, class is adjourned. Big thanks to Rakuten and the channel's patrons for their support. If you'd like to help the channel as well, make sure to join the Patreon, subscribe, leave a like, and ring the bell so you're never late. Until next time, catch you later.